All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on uh, three tips to convert more online leads. Hopefully, everybody's having a great Wednesday here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Kyle Cheslock. Uh, that is my Twitter handle down there uh, below, Kyle and Cheslock. I'm the VP of Sales here for the Lead Tool as well as the 4Me Group. And uh, our, 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 our vaunted leader, if you will, will be joining us here in a few minutes to, to chime in and chip in with his uh, feedback on how to convert more online leads. His name is Chase Shields. So uh, we're going to give it a couple of minutes while everybody's logging in here. But uh, feel free to share this far and wide if you got some people from your organization that uh, just were not able to make it away, uh, make it to the demo or webinar today, or uh, uh, have some people in your network that you feel like would be good uh, uh, benefit from this, feel free to share it to them. We do send out an email after this, uh, as well as we release it on our blog, which you can find at theleadtool.com. Uh, it's called In The Lead. It's right there on our website. Uh, as well as we push it out on our social media channels too. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, as well as Twitter, all at The Lead Tool. We try to keep it easy for you, uh, not to not to complicate things. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, want to add anything today, feel free to uh, comment in. We do cover those uh, at the end of the conversation today. Uh, there is no such thing as a dumb question. So anything you got, uh, feel free to fire it in there. And uh, we'll make sure it gets answered if we don't answer it as we go along. So, uh, with that being said, it looks like we got uh, we got a good amount of people rolling in here, and Chase is about ready to pop in too. So, why don't we just go ahead and, and, and kind of get started? We'll make it pretty quick today, too, guys. This isn't going to be like a thirty or forty-five minute webinar. I wanted to give you a couple tips, keep it high level, and that way you guys can go execute this in your business today. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's get going here. So. Uh, I want to show you some e-commerce stats, guys. If you're not already thinking about e-commerce, this needs to start moving up your chain, if you will, or up your totem pole, you know, depending on where you're at in the country and <laughs> what kind of terminology you like to use. But uh, e-commerce is becoming bigger and bigger, guys. So the, the, the focus on your website uh, needs to move to the forefront of what you're doing from just about everything you're doing. That's kind of your window, your gateway to who you are as a company anymore. As you can see, over 40% of all retail jobs in this space have disappeared. That's a pretty big number, guys. And this spans uh, uh, the retail sector uh, as a whole. And we'll kind of dive down. And we'll get a little bit more into you know your flooring specific, uh, kitchen and bath and all that good stuff, lumber, uh, uh, whatnot. But this gives you kind of a holistic preview of kind of where it came from in 1999. You know, it's 350 million. And I, you know, for those of you that have, <laughs> were around and back in, 1999, 2000, 2001, right, that, that Y2K era, if you will. Um, I'm going to bet you guys remember that, you know, when Amazon first came along, when online banking first started really developing, you know, nobody thought uh, people aren't going to buy online. They're not going to put their credit card or the most sensitive information online. It's just not going to happen. And here we are, less than two decades later, it now represents a $28 billion industry. And if you think it's going to, to change or decline, you're in for a rude awakening. It's only going to increase as smart, smartphones become more prevalent with, with purchasing. I mean, shoot, I just saw an article today about, uh, I think it's something like 19% of users. I mean, if you heard of Amazon Alexa or Siri. Uh, you know, I think Cortana is another one out there. All these digital assistants, if you will, you know, they're not even being used to their full capacity yet. Like 19% of users are ordering, you know, for Amazon's Alexa, ordering materials and goods and, you know, all that good stuff you can find on Amazon. Uh, using that digital assistant in, in, in Alexa, only 19% of users are actually using that. And it's expected to double next year. And it's going to keep growing as uh, the functionality and as more people get used to it and start ordering and, and, and developing things online which is going to make it even easier to buy online. I know we talk about you know, removing that barrier, uh, if you will, making it easier to find you, making it easier to buy from you. And that's kind of the shift in what's happening from, from that in-store experience to online. And uh, you can leverage your online presence and your e-commerce presence to do a, a you know, pick up in store, drive them in store, where uh, Chase will pop here in a minute, but I uh, can't remember the, 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 the stat off my head. 
um, but they're more likely to buy an additional item once you actually get them in your store. So uh, needless to say, you want to leverage what you have in terms of your online presence to drive them into the store. Now, you can see down at the bottom, you know, strictly e-commerce, which is non-store, just a straight up e-commerce site. They're doing 28 billion as well. An e-commerce traditional store, they're doing 691 million. So the, 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 there's a huge gap between your e-commerce stores and your brick and mortar stores that are also doing, um, you know, an e-commerce plan. So like I said, if you're not thinking about or doing e-commerce yet, you definitely want to move it up your radar because it's going to go hand in hand in terms of converting more of these online leads and making you a little bit more visible out there. And there's a ton of good websites. There's a ton of good opportunities for you guys to implement that in, you know, through sites like Shopify, all that good stuff. If you have questions, anything like that, that we can help you out with, shoot a comment over, or you can DM us after uh, uh, the presentation today, and we'd be more than happy to chat with you. Got to give you some ideas on what you could do. But in terms of, you know, three things that you can really do today to start uh, getting your online leads to, to, to convert more often, the easiest and, 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 and probably, well, maybe not the easiest, but one of the best ways to do this today is to list your inventory online, guys. And I always go back to think about when you shop, right? Think about what you guys are doing in terms of, of searching and browsing and perusing before you actually buy. If you can do that and kind of take yourself out of your uh, you know, your company shoes, if you will. Think about yourself as a consumer. When you go buy, uh, consumers want to know, right? It's all about knowledge. They're, they're, they're more informed now than they ever have been. A lot of that's due to having, uh, you know, basically a computer in your in your pocket and the palm of your hand at all times. Um, you know, but 75% of the time, customers are pricing an item at a nearby store. They're looking up other particular items, Right. 74% of items that are in stock at a near, nearby store. You know, so they're looking for this information and they're finding it extremely helpful as they do their research, as they look and see who they want to shop with, who they want to buy from. If you're the only store in your area that's listing their inventory online so they can take a look and see if it's worth a drive into your store or if they want to come in and, and, and check your prices out and things of that nature, who do you think they're going to go with? You or the guy down the street that doesn't list that information? Right. So this is a little thing you can do to start leveraging that. And then obviously this will kind of trickle into that e-commerce that I was just talking about as well. It kind of goes hand in hand. Right. You list your inventory online. It makes it a little easier to start driving in revenue for you guys uh, and doing a lot of, uh, you know, pick up in store. Uh, that is a huge, 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 huge win for you guys. If you're able to list this online, allow them to buy online. And then ship in store. A lot of manufacturers today are doing drop shipping as well. So you can do that too. But nevertheless, get your inventory online. Get your products online. As you can see, consumers want it. They find it extremely helpful. Uh, and you're going to be able to do this uh, in a relatively easy manner. Um, you know, uh, if you're not sure how, again, you know, feel free to, to message us. We got some ideas and we can help you guys, you know, start making that migration, if you will when it comes to uh, getting and listing that information online. Now, the second one, and this is uh, one in area, uh, talk to a lot of dealers, a lot of yards, uh, a lot of kitchen and bath companies that feel like their, their, their contact information is easily found, when in the reality, it's not. Um, you know, this is all about removing friction from your actual website. You know, the, the, the less friction you have, the easier it is for them to buy from you. And that's that's how you got to be thinking about this as you start wanting to convert more online leads, wanting to drive more. If, you, if you're not getting any online leads, if you're not driving any of that. Um, you know, these are, you know, designed to, to remove barriers to, to get to you now. You know, it used to be location, 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 but your location's on the internet now. And there's an infinite amount of supply of, of demand when it comes to that. So, you now... If your information is hard to find, you know, they're not going to want to contact you. And guys, info at yourbusiness.com, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it doesn't qualify. You know, people want to buy from people. And Chase is popping in right here, and this is something that he can definitely talk a lot about uh, when it comes down to it. You know, technology exists and all these things exist, you know, not to, to, to remove that personal one-on-one -on -one touch, but to make it easier, right? The more you use tech, the more you like spend talking to people. Yeah. You know? 
So, because, like, the idea is to use a shortcut. So, the tech is actually a shortcut. So, like, and it's all, like, trading time. So, you know, if I use some some tech, it's going to take me a little bit of time, but it's going to save me a hell of a lot of time. Like, CRM. On the back end, yeah, right. Yeah, CRM might take 10 minutes to enter some information, but it's going to save you hours searching. And it's that one thing that you remember that's going to get you the deal. Right. You know, about what the customer is looking for, the job, like some little detail that you put in a system that if you don't have it, you don't get it. The other thing is like, you know, tech like Square in e-commerce, it just makes it easier. Like, you know, when you think about advertising and driving people into the store, so you think e-commerce, listing your inventory online, like that gives someone a reason to come into your store. That's like a lead that you wouldn't mm-hmm. get if you weren't using e-commerce because so much of that is driven by inventory being listed where people can find it. So they come into your store because the biggest reason they want to come into a store is to see, touch and feel something. The, um, least important reason that they come into the store is for store experience. So yeah. they're really like, they want to see if you have it. They want to come to you and see it. And then, you know, if they... And then need, you can sink your teeth into them, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, to the extent, like, you know, where can you provide the value, right? Yeah. So um, some people come in super educated and they just need, like, you know, someone to ring them out. Yeah. But, other, other, but you've got to ask. You don't know yeah. that unless you ask going off topic on the sales process. So because everyone now assumes that customers don't need help. That's not true. Yeah. No. Uh, but you got to engage them. And tech is a good way to do that. Yeah. And, 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 and to piggyback off that, too, you know, uh, technology is going to replace a lot of acti- activity, if you will, with productivity. Yeah. And so many people confuse. It's like we hear like every retailer ever like it's always I'm busy I'm busy I'm busy I'm busy yeah. like we talked about this on our podcast like yeah. no like you're just like doing things activities to, yeah it, you're, it's not you're it's taking not, up time right like if you stopped and like not if, if if like being productive was important rather than being active like busy saying I'm busy has become like a status symbol yeah. like, no you're not yeah. you're not busy no. <laughs> like you're, no. and, and, and you're, you're, not, can, you're not too busy for this no and you can leverage and the, and the nice thing about this is, right, you're going to replace activity with productivity, you know, and, and you can do it through online lead generation here. When you list things like your inventory online and easily found contact info, it allows you to have additional pop-up modals yeah. or in, in, inline modals within your website to capture this information. Well, you bring up a really good point. Like e-commerce is great lead gen. Yeah. Because like, so Google did a study and they found that, um, like in this way, hell, if it worked for Sears, it can work for anybody. Yeah. Um, we know we know that people love lead gen, local, right? Yeah, local inventory ads actually like increased um, foot traffic or visits triggered by the ad. It like doubled it. But but what they found was that showing local or showing your inventory in general, not just the ads, it, uh, it, it's like seventy eight percent more likely to trigger an in store visit within twenty four hours. Well, I think the easiest and, and, and the easiest uh, 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 example we can probably give you that I think everybody will get here is think about the last time you bought a car. When you go search for a car or auto trader or any, any, any local dealership, what do they do? They list their inventory online for you, right? Yeah. I mean, and how many, I mean, how many leads were, were coming in? You guys are managing, what, three or 400 a month? Yeah. So like, so. Who wouldn't want three or 400 leads a month? Right, and that was all like literally coming in off the inventory. Off the inventory, like no one yeah. called in and said, "Hey, you've got a Porsche dealer. Do you have X, Y, Z?" Yeah, they literally called in, or they you're, would you're, call in and say, "I saw this vehicle. It's this color. It's this stock number." Like you know, so yeah. it's, it's the equivalent of like having your LVT inventory online. Like I have Cortec, you know, this this color, like this style. Yeah. Like, do you have it? Yeah, we've got it. Okay, well, I saw it on your site. I wanted to check. I'm coming in. Great. Like, e-commerce really for brick and mortar is nothing but glorified lead gen. And it's also, like, a great way. Like, so someone does buy on your website? Great. That's a sale you wouldn't have had otherwise. Awesome. Awesome. Like, and it's costing you, like, zero dollars more to get that sale. Yep. Yep. And you want to make sure the appropriate people are listed on your website, right? So... Instead of just having like info at yourbusiness.com. Yeah, put actual people on there. Yeah, put your Again, it comes back to people want to buy from people, right? Well, so, you, you can email Jeff Bezos. You know that, right? Yeah. Jeff Bezos reads all of his emails. Yep. So if Jeff Bezos Mark Cuban, is, same is, thing. is on track to be the world's most wealthy man, don't tell me that you're like so busy that you need to hide. Of course, 
some retailers yep. who are all busy. No, you're not. Like Spencer Raskoff, CEO you, of Zillow, it, same thing. Right. Like you know, it, it, it it's, it's it's something that's really easy to do that will immediately separate you from your your peers in the space and competitors in your marketplace simply by listing basic contact information. And here's the thing too: if you have leads, you know, and you, and you redistribute them to nine, ten, or you know, x amount of your team members, that doesn't really matter. You can you can centralize all that through one person. You just got to list it through one person. People want to know who they're talking to. They don't want to talk to sales at theleadtool.com. They want to talk to no. myself or you, right? Yeah, I mean, they get, or yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, that's one of the reasons like online chat is so great, like on your site. Yeah. Um, because you can really like personalize the, the experience there. You know, I didn't put a, uh, a slide on here for online chat, but uh, I, I feel like that's it's, definitely it's something hard. That, it's hard to like, it's you, you again, it's, it's a great, that, it's great. You, yeah. You can't just like slap it on there. Like yeah. you've got to like think through how you're going to. Sure. Sure. What, you know, what the, what the, what the flow is, which will, you know, before we digress and get off topic, we'll, we'll discuss that in one of our Facebook lives or another webinar. But yeah, I know there's some, a lot of great studies that are done out there through intercom and a host of other particular uh, vendors that, <laughs> that there's a lot of value in it, but uh, we'll move on to number three, right? And this is arguably probably, you know, outside of listing your inventory in terms of generating that lead. This is, this is the follow through with that. You know, what do you do when you get that lead generated? What, what happens when you get an email or you get it sent to your CRM? What do you need to do? And this is arguably, you know, one of the one of the more important items that you need to do, and that's to follow up and respond to these inquiries. Like the stats on people and individuals and companies that simply do not follow up on a lead, just in general, let alone in a timely fashion, is just absurd in 2017. You know, time is of the essence. You are ten times more likely. To never get in contact with a lead if you don't reach out in the first 10 minutes. If you personally don't have time in 10 minutes, give it to another team member. Trust me, it's more damaging to the brand than it is for you to lose the sale. Okay? So you got to get it into the hands of somebody that's going to have the time to contact him within the first 10 minutes. You know, the first hour more realistically, you know, obviously as time goes on, you know, uh, you're less and less and less likely to get in touch with this actual person, which brings me to the next point. You need to follow up with it. If you don't, if you call them in the first five minutes, you call them in the first minute, you call them in the first hour, whatever it is, and that's the only time that you're doing it, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot, particularly if you're spending any kind of money, digital advertising, driving traffic to your website and hopefully leads into your business and your people aren't following up or you have no idea if your people are following up or if you're just thinking to yourself, well, they've been working for me for 20 years. They should know. They should know the process. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. We're all human. You know, shit happens. Unless you have your thumb on it, unless you absolutely know what's happening in your business, you don't know. Okay. That's why systems like CRM are extremely important for this. But you need to follow up five to 12 times before you kick them to the curb. Just because they're not answering your phone call or your text or your email the first couple of times um, uh, doesn't mean they're not interested in buying. And again. I said at the beginning, think about yourself. Think about when you, you know, uh, 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 request information on something you're buying, whether you're putting a new pool in, which is nice. It's 92 degrees here in Cincinnati today. I'd love to be in a pool. Yeah. But, uh, you know, whatever it may be, a new car. I mean, that's the easiest one I think we all get. But, you know, think about it. When they reach out to you or you get an email and you miss the text message, do you call them back? Probably not. More times than not, you're going to be. Uh, doing something with life, right? Life happens to all of us, whether that's a, a kid's soccer game or something came up at work or whatever it is, just life tends to happen to people. And uh, you need to be persistent and vigilant in terms of your follow-up until you either get a hard no or you get to that 12th follow-up or 15th follow-up or whatever you deem worthy of your process. Uh, and, it, and, and the results are going to pay dividends. You know, those who really uh, uh, grow their sales. And I'm not talking about a point or two. I'm talking about significant growth. They're doing things like this, you know. For instance, you know, the buying journey for somebody that's looking for flooring, it's 149 days long, you know. There's stats like that for kitchen and bath and all that good stuff. Contrary to your people and salespeople in general's belief of, I got to close what's right in front of me. 
most of your business, most of your opportunity is not that. So if you think you're doing well right now, imagine what's happening if you're capturing this information. A, B, you have a solid follow-up process in place to convert these online leads, and that will be some of the easiest leads that you'll ever close. Is they're already interested. They're already showing you that they want to buy. You just got to follow up and secure that commitment. So, yeah, that's literally the beauty of online leads. Literally the beauty of it, right? So, um, that being said, guys, I, I wanted to keep it short today. We're at that 20 minute marker. Hopefully, you guys got some good uh, feedback and tips through it. I wanted to keep it high level. Let's see if there's any questions that came in on what you can do. What are a few good ways to list inventory like flooring on our website without having developed some solution of our own? So that's a really awesome question. And as a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, um, we just had someone contact us uh, who's looking for something like kind of similar. So <clears throat> one of the, the easiest ways to do that is to um, to find a solution that has like so, something like a Shopify which is very, very affordable. Um, I think like their paid plans start around 49 bucks. Yeah. Um, and then they have a variety of ways of actually getting your inventory. Um, so you can, you can upload uh, CSV. Um, you can, I, I, they have a number of connectors so they can connect to like cloud-based inventory systems. Um, if, but you, if, you, if you have that. Right, right. Which the, the, the easiest thing to do, though, is to have a um, to have a platform like a Shopify. Magento is another one, but that requires development. Shopify is more like kind of. It's out of the box. Yeah. It's, and, and so what's great about that is they also have like connectors that will push your, your inventory to Amazon. They'll push it to Google for um uh, excuse me, Google's uh, local inventory. So like- Which is great, you, it gets you more exposure. It gets you a ton of exposure because when you when you Google, like when I Google a, a product, um, like if I Google uh, Poplar crown molding, uh, uh, Google will give me a list of hits and it gives you a tab called shopping. When you press shopping, you get listings for um, local businesses and, and all the different products where you can buy and you can actually, you know, narrow it down and filter, but that data gets there from a platform like a Shopify. So the easiest place to start is just to get kind of a plug and play little e-commerce website, get your inventory uploaded into it. Um, Square also another one. I think, um, I, mean, I, think I think Square is even free. Um, and, and I don't know the one thing I don't know about Square is I don't know, about their connectivity to like, like Google and Amazon. Yeah, I don't. That's the. I don't know. I know Square's kind of like the the um, the side that we connect to a yeah. lot better than I know the the e-commerce the side, like yeah. pushing data and pulling data from it, rather than like where Square goes. But Square and Shopify would be the first two places I would look. Yeah. Um, Shopify probably being the one that that where I would I would start personally. But Square is awesome too. The other thing is Square's got great POS solutions. Um, they've got a whole bunch of other great stuff you can use. So yeah. awesome question. Yeah, great question, Lee. Yeah, and if you have more questions, just email us. Shoot us yeah. an email, or if you're on Facebook, you can just message our Facebook. Like whatever, we don't care. We're on every channel, so wherever it's easy for you, just ping us. We'll we'll help absolutely. Out. And as you can see, you know, we listed it there for you, and I said in the beginning, it's all at the lead tool. You'll be able to find all this content plus more at all those sites. If you're a podcast guy, I didn't get it up there. Not, let, not enough real estate on that screen. But uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, check us out, the lead tool, uh, if you want to listen to it on the car way home. Uh, otherwise, like I said, our emails are listed there too. Uh, it doesn't have to be about our product, guys. We want to help you. So if you have any questions in terms of being able to, to, to list products online or other e-commerce or other uh, – ways to convert online leads to your pop-up modals. Feel free to ask us. We're available for you. Otherwise, guys, feel free to share this far and wide. Uh, this is Chase and Kyle signing off. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us today. And uh, we'll be back again in a couple more weeks with uh, another opportunity, another webinar for you guys.